Welcome back to LY Studio. Gone are the days of switching between the line tool, the frame tool, the rectangular tool, everything tool. Today I'm teaching you guys how to make this layout and we're gonna do this with just two different tools. Let's get started. Okay, so as we do with all the other documents, we're gonna start off with creating a new document, changing this into inches. We're gonna use a standard eight and a half by 11. We have two pages that are facing and then we're gonna start on page number two, just because we don't want that first title page. Um, and then we're gonna leave the columns as is and the margins we're gonna leave on 0 0.5 inches. We want a larger margin just to keep everything a little bit more clean. And for this one, we do have full bleed elements, meaning things go all the way to the edge. And so we're keeping things at a 0 0.125 standard bleed. So after I've go ahead and created that, I'm going to go and anchor the left page with a image. So in order to create that, I'm gonna use the pen tool. And the pen tool is the first of our magic tools. Usually we would use something like a rectangular frame tool, but since we're only doing this with two tools, I'm gonna use the pen tool. The pen tool is actually more versatile than the rectangular frame tool anyways, because it can create different shapes and act as a frame. So here I'm creating a just a simple rectangle. I click the first point on the corner of the page. Then I'm gonna hold shift just to make sure that everything is orthogonal, meaning they travel straight. And then I'm creating the rest of the four corners. Like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag my image inside this frame and I'm going to fit this to the frame proportionally. So we have an anchoring image already. We can adjust the size just by dragging this out. Either way, it's, it's really up to you uh, what this looks like over here. Now we're going to round out this page with some text. So the second magical tool is going to be the text tool. And a text tool you guys are all familiar with, shortcut key T. I'm going to drag a nice uh, big text box here. And let's say that this says something like, uh, take the leap of faith. So after you type that in, I'm gonna give it a nice font that I think would work well in this situation. For here, I'm gonna use Futura Demi. So there you go, looks pretty good. Uh, what I'm also going to do is, you can see that the, the spacing between the two lines is a little bit too much for me right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and select everything and we're just gonna change this right here. So this is the height between the different lines and I'm going to move it until I find something that makes a little bit more sense. Maybe 48 makes a little bit more sense here. And then if I hit W, you can preview it. Now I do see a line around my image here and that's because we have a stroke outline on the pen that we just drew. Just make this into a nun and that'll just go away. So go ahead and adjust that until you find something that works. I made this frame a little bit bigger just so it doesn't clip off this man's face too much but I like the E just sitting on top of the bottom of the frame here, that seems to work really well. Next, we're just going to go ahead and use the type tool once again, and just fill out this page with some placeholder text. So right click, placeholder text, and I'm gonna use a font that is something like Arial that works really well with a font like Futura. So I'm giving it a re Arial regular, and we're actually gonna make this into two different columns. So I'm gonna right click on this text box, go into text frame options. Once this pops up, we're gonna simply change the number of columns to two. And you can preview this, uh, and then you can also adjust the gutter if you want it to be a little bit thinner, you can do that. Go ahead and hit okay. And I like my text to be a little bit thinner because we don't want it to read too thick on this page. So I'm gonna turn this into a 50% opacity. And then if we preview that, we're just gonna leave that as is right now and maybe this can come down a little bit, similar with the image, and yeah, that looks pretty good. Now, the last thing I want to really do on this page is just to add a little bit of a text element on the other side. So if I just create another simple text box, fill with placeholder text, change this into my Arial font, and make this into a 50% opacity, I'm gonna also just rotate it on the side. I'm thinking of this as a sort of a caption for this photo over here. And I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller just so it's not touching the title there. All right guys, for the second page, imagine this with me, okay? Seven different stripes. We're gonna put the words, work harder. No, work smarter, not harder. And it's going to go across the page like that, okay? So in order to help us do this, we're actually going to do this with some guides. So I'm gonna go ahead and go up to layouts, create guides, I'm gonna make the number of rows into seven. So if I go ahead and click that and that, 
then we can see that it's going to create our seven for us. Now, make sure that we have this fitted to the margin. Otherwise, they're not going to be equal. Go ahead and click OK. And we're going back to our trusty pen tool. So Command P. And I'm just going to draw some nice shapes that I think is reminiscent of like a paper cutout. OK, so I'm going to hold Shift once again if I'm drawing straight lines that is horizontal or vertical. And then I'm just going to make some jagged edges. Again, holding Shift over here. And then again, making some jagged edges. Great, that's one. Let's make another one. Once you have three, we can actually just go ahead and copy these three. And then you can hold Alt to copy them. And then you can actually just flip them around and they'll look like totally different cuts, right? Can't really tell that these are copies of one another. And then for the last one, I'm just going to pick a random one, copy it down again, and just rotate it. So after we have something like that, that looks pretty good. Um, here to preview it, we're going to just switch the fill and stroke. That's kind of what is going to be holding our image in. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to visualize where the characters are going to be. So say for this one, we have work on the second line here. We have smarter on the third. We have not on the fifth, and then we have harder on the sixth. So the longer words, harder and smarter, we're going to delete those. So work harder, we're going to delete that one, and then not, sorry, work smarter, and then the, the fifth one is not, and then the sixth is harder, and we're going to delete that one as well. And we're going to make space for where we think those letters are coming in. So I'm going to make that just a little bit smaller, like this. And yeah, so this, these spaces are where we're going to put our letters. And after we made space for all of these images, we're going to go and use the trusty type tool. And speaking of trusty, it's a good idea to visit some of my websites. I have a lot more of these resources for you guys that you can actually access. And hey, if you need some kind of resume, you can actually get this template for free. So check it out at lohstudio.com. And uh, yeah, let's get back to this. So. We want to create some sort of text so we can actually turn on the, the guides once more. And then I'm going to just drag a box that fills this uh, guide. And this part, remember, we have work. So I'm going to write that all in caps. And I'm actually going to give it a Futura bold for this one. Where is it? There we go. And I'm going to make it into a size that I think is pretty big. Now, this doesn't matter too much. We're going to be working this out. Um, but make it like a 72 or whatever works, whatever is close to becoming the top and bottom of these guides. And then we're going to just copy these letters over using the alt key and dragging this. So for this one, we're doing smarter. So I'm going to write smarter. Great. And then the next one is going to be not. And then the next one is going to be harder. Now we want to modify the size of these words. And how we're going to do that is I'm going to select all of these texts. I'm going to type and I'm going to create outlines. That'll basically make these into vectors that we can adjust the size of, which is exactly what we want. Now, again, with all of these things selected, I'm going to hold shift while I do this. I'm just going to make sure that one of these, so I'm looking at the work up here. I'm going to adjust the size of this until I like the size that work is appearing. So something like that actually looks pretty good to me. You don't really want to fill it from top to bottom. Leave a little bit of space for the margins uh, or the guides. Uh, so I think this is a good size for us. After we have that, all we have to do is drag these within our margins like this. And you have something that is already pretty cool. Now, what we're going to do next is actually rotate everything just to give it a little bit of a flare. Okay, so I'm going to select everything. And then up here where it says the rotation, I'm just going to give it a simple three degree rotation. I'm going to move everything down so it's centered once more. And what I'm going to do actually as well is just give it a little bit of flair. What I mean by that is we're going to drag this out. So imagine there's an invisible line cutting this off and it's running off the page. We're going to drag this out so that the these elements actually go out of the page. So this one, maybe it goes all the way to the right. Same thing with this guy. And maybe this one goes all the way to the left. It's running off the page. OK, great. Now that we have something like that worked out, I'm going to select every single one of these frames that we made. 
And what we're going to do is go into objects. We're going down into path and we're going to make this into a compound path. That means whatever image I put into this thing, it's going to cover the entirety of every single one of these frames instead of doing it one by one, okay? So I'm dragging my image all the way in and you can see that it's gonna fill the entire image. Again, I'm going to go ahead and fit the frame proportionally. You can see it's coming in very nicely. I also want a nice background for this entire page. So I'm creating another rectangle by using the pen tool. So I'm clicking the four corners of this page while holding shift. And once you have that, you can actually just make this into the stroke and put whatever color you need into this. Okay, it's a nice gray and you can see right now it's on the top of everything. We're gonna right click and then we're actually gonna go and arrange this and just send it all the way to the back. So if we preview this, it looks pretty good. We want the letters to not be dark because we can't really see it, honestly. So we're gonna change the fill into paper and boom, it already pops out like that. Now, the next thing I like to do is just make sure that these letters are hitting the margins and a little bit more centered on, you know, between the different pieces of artwork that we have here. So yeah, that looks pretty good. As long as we respect the margins on all sides, we should be good to go. Uh, so in order to actually get these things to not show up, the easiest way is to just click whatever you have in the background here. Alt, drag this all the way over so that it also fills this page. But instead, we're just going to make this into a nice paper color. And then you can see that these guys are still in front of everything. So we're going to arrange, send this to the back. And then we're going to click the background image of this, so the solid color. And we're also going to send this to the back. So you can see that now we have that cut off because it's behind the background of the left page. I like to give this just a little bit of a flair. So we can actually just go ahead and select everything here and try to match that with the red. Now, usually we're, we can use something like the eyedropper tool. Since we're doing it with only two tools, I'm just gonna use my eyeballs. So that already makes the page look a little bit uh, nicer, but you already have a very nice and very simple layout that you guys can make. And we only did it in two different tools. So if you guys have learned anything new or would like to see anything in the future, let me know down in the comments. Definitely check out our website. I have a bunch of resources for you guys, like all of the layouts downloadable as InDesign, as well as things like written instructions and also updated. So if you want to support the channel, uh, check out our memberships page on our website and you get resource to everything. You can follow along to the tutorial with your own file. So with that said, I hope you guys learned something new and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.